The girls who girl, girl. The girls who girl in, gorn't. We talk about thin privilege and this is a really good example. So I am making my breakfast and I have a piece of pizza from Domino's left that I didn't finish last night and it sounded really good so I'm eating it. Because I exist in a smaller body, you're probably like, wow, good for her. Like she has food freedom. She doesn't restrict herself. She doesn't say pizza's only a dinner food and things like that. But not only to think if I was in a bigger body, would you still be thinking the same things? Would you still say good for her? Or would you say, are you sure you want to eat that? Something to think about. Guys, do you remember the time when I posted an almost identical video to this? But I was told that I should avoid potatoes. I was given unwanted and unsolicited health advice when I was minding my own business, just making a cooking video. But I was told that I needed to avoid potatoes. Do you remember that? Do you remember how fat people and thin people are not allowed to exist in the same way on the internet? You remember that? Again, no hate to this guy. I have no issue with him and I don't hate him. I'm not also not mad at him either. I am using his video as an example to compare how thin people and fat people are not treated the same way. So. What is your favorite thing that thin people do that's like quirky cute? Being unwashed or just smelling bad in general. I was so furious when all the celebrities were like, I only bathe my children once a week because it just reeks of thin privilege. If you are ever in a public space and there is a distinct smell happening, nine times out of 10, everyone will assume that that smell belongs to whoever the fattest person in the room is. There was a time where I was straight up in an elevator where I watched a thin woman like twist her whole body and rip ass and start giggling and everyone in the elevator looked at me. It is just assumed that fat people smell and that's not true. And then when thin people are caught as like the source of the smell, it's always like, oh, I'm getting in touch with my body. I'm trying to be a little bit more all natural or people laugh it off and they're like, oh, I guess you forgot to wear deodorant today. But if like a fat person forgets to wear deodorant one day, it's a reflection of our entire existence. Thin privilege is a joke. If you're fat and unhappy about it, change yourself. Why don't you change yourself? Let's start there. Because the main reason people who are overweight are unhappy is because people like you shame them just for existing. They're not the problem. You're the problem. Y'all remember when people got upset that I put three scrambled eggs instead of two into my breakfast hash that I ate? And people went wild about it? Thin privilege, fat phobia, you're welcome. <laughs> Uh, for my wild exercise, I choose this brownie. It's such a workout. Promoting obesity is what it takes to make other fat people feel hot. Obviously, I'm gonna do that. So yes, I am promoting obesity. Stay mad. Thank you so much. So I had a doctor's appointment today and it was a follow up to the last few weeks have been a little bit of a shit show. Something small happened that ended up causing a couple surgeries and it turned into being a bigger deal than it needed to be. Part of what happened, though, unfortunately, um, meant a lot less intake than I no would normally have, especially in my recovered life. And my body has really taken a hit because of it. My heart, my blood pressure, all of that. Well, my doctor today asked me what my intake has looked like these last several days. So I did like a 24-hour review of what I'd eaten. And she was like, oh, that's great. She went on to say a couple other things, and she's like, well, good, good. At least you're not eating pizza. And to that I say, This is probably going to make some of you very mad, but today I want to talk about why non-marginalized people, specifically thin people, don't belong in the body positivity movement. Thin people have turned this movement into being about self-love, and that really just highlights how much privilege you have. This movement was never supposed to be about self-love. It was supposed to be about dismantling systems of oppression, specifically racism, fat phobia, and ableism. We can't love ourselves out of oppression. I'm fat and disabled. Just because I love myself, which I do, doesn't mean that I'm somehow shielded from fat phobia or ableism. Start your own movement, call it self-love, but when you call what you're doing body positivity and it's not, you are drowning out voices of the marginalized who have gone unheard for much too long.
You're welcome to be an ally, but that means accepting feedback about problematic things that you say and centering the voices of the marginalized, not your own. I just want to have a quick chat. If you're a fat ally, just listen up. If you think that the term fat ally is stupid, oh my god, scroll. I could not care less about your opinion. If you care the smallest amount of fat people, you're going to have to stop pointing out we're fat every single chance you get. Because I, I feel like thin people have this weird need to remind fat people we are different. That, oh, what's your unique thing? And by this I mean, oh my god, you look like you give the greatest hugs. It's because I'm, you think I'm like soft and cushiony. Or, oh my god, oh, you're actually eating a salad, good for you. You don't know my diet, Branica. I mean, like, even in my acting class today, it was literally like, so your niche is that you're fat. I am so much more than that. And I don't need you to point it out every day, and it's just frustrating. I have a condition called lipedema. It's a rarely diagnosed fibrotic fat disorder that grows the legs and sometimes the arms really big. Lipedema fat isn't losable, so you can't diet or exercise it away. Most people have seen lipedema, but they don't know it. 11% of all people assigned female at birth are said to have it. Very few people assigned male at birth have lipedema. It's often dismissed as obesity and ignored due to medical fat phobia. Here I am putting on arm compression to help reduce swelling and hopefully I genuinely don't know how many times I've had to repeat this, but skinny shaming and fat phobia are not the same thing. Skinny shaming is being bullied for your body. It's body shaming, right? Which fat people experience as well. No matter who gets body shamed, body shaming is bad, okay? Body shaming bad. However, fat people also experience an entirely different part of fat phobia and discrimination that thin people will never experience. You will never ever understand what it's like to be a fat person in America, in the world, because you do not understand what it's like to be persecuted for your body, okay? Medical fat phobia, in the job market, in media, it's everywhere, okay? It's not, it's not just us being mocked for our bodies. It's so much more than that. And you guys choose not to listen to us and make it about yourselves.